All right, Paige, let's take a look at what you have here. All right. Stop a share window is closed. Okay. Let's try that again. Damn. All right. So I have two copies of your drawing here. Um, and what I want to do is first of all say uh, this is a really, really good attempt, okay? You're kind of getting the basic concepts, but we got to focus on some things that are going on. First, don't use the snail grid, uh, the, the snail matrix, because all it is is squares with the 45s in it, and um, it's not going to give you the, the dynamic uh, symmetry that you, you ultimately will want. <clears throat> now, let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to bring in our, our gauge, okay? And what we want to do is use this gauge, these lines, to basically find the rectangle um, that we want to work in. So I'm going to use, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to flip the gauge. Okay. Uh, and the reason why is because we want to find the diagonal of, of your Baroque here. Uh, the sinister is too small, so we want to go with the long, the dominant diagonal, which you have here as the uh, Baroque. So we want to get the gauge that go, that's going into this uh, Baroque diagonal. Uh, I'm going to put it on the light table, basically use it as a transparency. Okay, and remember what we said before was we wanted to come down It's kind of strange. Okay, so let's try this. There we are. All right. So either we want to come down from the edge of this uh, moon, okay, and to one of these corners, maybe like here or all the way to the edge or somewhere in there, okay? So what we want to do then is line up this vertical on there. And we can either use the root five, which is the cheating grid, or we come in here. Let's say we come down, instead of from this small circle, we come in from the inside of the, um, of, of the cup, okay? So it's gonna be like that. So let's go from the outside there outside line. So we put that on here and we see that if we go all the way to the edge like you have it, that's going to give us a uh, root four. Oops. It's going to give us a root four or a, um, a deer grid. Okay, so let's go ahead then and get our deer grid. Now, here is our vibe chart, okay? So we are going to uh, work with this grid right here. That root four rectangle, okay? So here we are. Oh, now you can see that the energy of this matrix is very, very different than the one that you're using. Okay. 
So I want you to go ahead and redo this design with inside of this matrix, okay? Now, there are a couple of things I want you to think about when doing this. Let's go ahead and bring this over here. We're gonna use a circle element here, a curve here. Make sure that these, like I said before, draw one of these sections here and then trace it very, very carefully uh, or draw it on a piece of tracing paper, okay? And then what you can do is fold it over and, and, and just duplicate it to the other side. That, so what you're gonna do is this. Do you see how automatically that locks things in? I mean, it just has, has a beautiful elegance to it. This is doing two different organic things, trying to make them the same, and then this is making them the same. Okay, because you just see how beautiful that is. Do the same thing down here. Um, with this element down here, get rid of this. This is just distracting. This is coming over, throwing your eye off. Um, don't do that. Uh, what we want to do is these little circles, they're too small. Make them, make them larger. Make them like the trees are curving up and the roots are curving like that, okay? And they're shooting out of there. I like, I, that's a good, good line there that you have. Okay. And when you put the, um, the grid on this, the uh, matrix grid, uh, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. So if you, if you bring them in, you can see how, come on. how you can bring a curve and it's gonna give you gonna give you the measurements. Okay? You can build over your, your curves like that. Now here you have this diagonal coming through you have it here as well. You can use that line, or you may end up bringing this up on this uh, root four baroque. This is your forty-five degree baroque with inside your snail, inside your snail, uh, your your snail in um, square grid. This is the deer root four, and this is the baroque for for that. So you can already begin to see how this feels like it's actually growing up. This feels like it's been oppressed almost, it's being pushed down way too far. And then it has this, this shoot up, which is kind of nice, but um, this is about you guys growing together, okay? So use that grid, and when you do this, this uh, outline isn't the grid that you're supposed to be working in, okay? This is just a matrix. So what you're going to do is once you have this drawn, what we were saying before is we were coming down through here, and then we were coming down on a root four, which I think brought us to about here, okay? So then you can come, this will tell you where your bottom is, okay? This is gonna be the outside. And then you're gonna basically do the same measurement, but starting from here, coming across. Okay. 
which actually might be a 1.5 rectangle. Okay, so that would be a really nice um, size of, for, 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 for that composition, all right? So figure that, that solution out here. If this is where you're gonna have this edge coming through here, you might have to bring this down to where this connects. So it shoots up, brings you up right there. This is then gonna come down. This is gonna come across. You have this coming up through there. All right, and then if this is coming up, we got one, two, three, four. So why don't we go in? Well, we don't know that. Um, one, two, three, four. We can come through here. It's that inner ball, outer ball. One, two, three. One, two, three. There you go. Okay, so that's going to be the uh, the field that you use for this composition. All right, Peach. Uh, one last thing here, when looking and doing these, what I want you to do is pay very close attention to where your lines are. Now, I'm going to work on this snail grid, which I don't want you to use. Um, you have this line coming in here, and then you have it here. So use the the lock lock your lines into the grid we call it anchoring okay anchor your lines as much as you can into the grid that's available um you have it coming in here the, the, this whole curve and this thing doesn't exist inside this grid so you want to at least come from here maybe there then if you need to go from this point to um Let's say you come halfway, this gives you a point, and you need to maybe go from this point to this point. You can do that, because at least you're going from one point to another point, okay? And then ultimately you're gonna erase that. So here you're gonna come from this point up there, uh, I'm going to go from this point to this point. If this comes down, rather than going on that angle, just go straight up. And if you need to go from that point to maybe this point to give you that angle, you can do that. From this point to this point that point to that point. And you see how that gives you that nice little bend, but it conforms to the grid. Cool. All right, so good job. Um, you can try to get this posted uh, on the website by tomorrow. That would be great. Uh, if you need a few days, then uh, try to make sure that it's done by Tuesday, okay? So that would give you a little feedback before uh, your Thursday uh, meetup. All right? Cool beanage. Good job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm.